So, Mikel Arteta has signed his new deal. It's no real shock to me, but I will say that it is always the timing with Arsenal. It looks now as if they're going to try to have a little bit of bad news with a little bit of good news. And the timing always makes me smile. It makes me chuckle. Going into the North London derby this weekend, which of course we're all looking forward to, but with the kind of doubts in our mind about who might start, the injury problems that we've got at the club, the fact that the transfer window has been somewhat deflating to some. Now Mikel Arteta has signed his new deal, a three-year deal we are being told with a kind of option to sign another one. What that does to me is I think what it does is it doesn't surprise me or shock me. There was a lot of options that he had. He could see the season out, make a decision as to whether he believed that he'd been successful or that he'd failed and he could walk. The other option is that he makes a decision to leave because he doesn't feel like he's been backed this summer. The other decision is he looks at what Pep Guardiola is doing and then he potentially takes over at Manchester City, as some people have said. But actually what's happened is what I thought would happen. He's committed his future to the club and has shown that he believes that he is the one that should be given the chance to take Arsenal forward. And I think when you look at it, there's an opportunity to be looking at this in two ways. First of all, he's clearly got the backing from the board and from the ownership. When you look at the contracts he signed previously, it's always been my belief that he's got 100% backing. Whether you believe the Cronkies, Edu, Garlic have given him 100%, this transfer window, you can't deny the fact that there's been an opportunity for his future to never have really been considered or up in the air. And I think that just proves why um, I've always believed he'd stay at Arsenal. Whether or not you believe he's achieved great things, whether you believe he's been successful, whether you believe he's failed, whether you believe he's done an OK job, I always thought that the Cronkies believed in him. I truly believe whatever happens, Mikel Arteta will be the Arsenal manager for the next few years. And I've always said when people are like, oh, his future's up in the air, Dan, it doesn't matter what happens, if he doesn't win Sank this year, he has to go, blah, blah, blah. I always believe that if we finish trophyless, as long as we've been in a title race, he will stay. If we secure Champions League football, he will stay. If we get close but not close enough, he will stay. The only way that he's going to, in my opinion, be sacked or relieved from his duties is if the fan base believe that they want him out. We saw what happened with Wenger. We saw what happened with Unai Emery. And for me, as long as the fan base are on side and as long as Mikel Arteta is, in the Cronkies' eyes, doing his job, he's always going to be safe. So it doesn't surprise me that he signed this deal whatsoever. What it does mean now is that Arsenal can actually have no question marks moving forward about what happens to Mikel Arteta. Mikel Arteta will stay at Arsenal. Mikel Arteta, I believe, is the guy that the Cronkies think can take us across the line. Whether the fan base do, doesn't really matter, does it? Let's be real. There's a section of the fan base that don't believe Mikel Arteta is good enough. There's a section of the fan base believe that Mikel Arteta has done a wonderful job. And there's a section of the fan base that are still yet to be convinced that he is the guy that can get us across the line. And it doesn't really matter what side of the coin you're at. You've kind of got justification to feel how you feel for all of those things. You can have justification to not believe because he's not got us across the line. You can have justification to believe because he's got us challenging again from a really poor scenario when he joined the club and you can also still be unconvinced that he's the guy because he hasn't proved anything yet that he can lift silverware other than when he first came to the club which let's be real was a complete mess he's got us challenging again there's no doubt he deserves credit for that he's managed to get us in a position where every single season now we've got belief that we can go up against Pep Guardiola that's something he deserves credit for because for me we're talking about one of the greats here we're talking about one of the best teams here. We're talking about combined, the best manager and best team in world football right now that we're going up against every single week, looking at their results, wondering what's going to happen. Not being surprised when they put threes and fours and fives past teams. Arsenal have got to get to that level. And in fact, Arsenal have got to get better than that level. We know what we're up against. And yeah, you can complain about it that Manchester City aren't in the leagues in Spain and they aren't in Germany and they aren't in France, but that's just football. We had it before with um, Sir Alex Ferguson with Wenger, we've got it again with Pep Guardiola and now Mikel Arteta. Now I'll leave you on this, if Mikel Arteta does not win something this season, I think there's huge pressure. I've always said that, I'm going to change that right now. I don't think there's any pressure on Mikel Arteta now. He's been told that he can go into the season and he doesn't have to win anything, he just needs to compete 
and not regress. That's what I think the contract talks have been about. If you do not regress, you will stay at the club. And what I mean by that is, if you're not in a position where potentially you come from being second, two points off, and you go third, fourth, fifth, if you're regressing, maybe they can consider his, his future. But for me, we're in a position right now where potentially there's an opportunity for him to actually just secure Champions League football, go in for a title race, and it doesn't really matter how many points you are away. If we finish trophyless, I don't think they'll pull the plug. Not by believing in giving him this three-year contract now. So I think it's job done. We know now what the Cronkies are about. We know now what they see as a successful season. And it isn't winning. I don't think they've showed the ambition to win for many, many years. I don't think the Cronkies have ever said that they want to go that above and beyond. I saw that this transfer window. I didn't see an ESAT come in. I think we needed one. I didn't see a midfielder come in that I would have taken us to the next level. I think we needed one. I didn't see that wide player, that attacking midfielder come in that I thought, wow, takes us to the next level. For me, we've done the bare minimum yet again. We've got a Calafiori, who, let's be real, could be very good, but that's no different than Jury and Timber signing. We've got Marino, who I think will be a good midfield player when he does come in and play and, play and be fit. But I don't think it's an, a massive upgrade on what we already did have. And of course, Raheem Sterling, is that a huge upgrade? Well, it's an upgrade. I don't think it takes us to that next elite level. Does that window get us across the line? Not for me. So we're going to have to look at that now and say, has Stan Kroenke given his all? We're so close. Go into that window and allow Mikel Arteta the tools to get across the line. So it leaves us in a bit of a strange scenario now. Mikel Arteta is under no pressure. I don't think they've showed the ambition to get across the line and win. And I will say this, and I, and I believe it when I say this, I don't think there's a togetherness and understanding that an Alexander Isak is what they want. I really struggle to believe that Isak is a guy that they want. I didn't see us link with any strikers. We certainly weren't in for Isak. We weren't in for Jokeres. We weren't in for Tony, who was available for £10 million more than we sold Eddie for. We weren't in for Watkins. We weren't in for Osimhen. I don't know that we wanted a striker. It's strange because we've gone in one summer wanting Vlahovic, the next summer wanting Sesko. We've ended up getting Neva. And not only did we not get Eva signing, we did actually get a striker. Does Mikel Arteta not want a number nine? Does he believe that Kai Havertz and Jesus are the number nines? These are all question marks that I can't answer right now. And I'm not sure we'll ever get to know the bottom of it. Then I look into the midfield area and I think, surely if you're not going to replace Emil Smith-Rowe, don't sell him. Fappy Vieira, you let him go on loan. No money coming in there for a replacement. You either got a massive, massive, massive amount of faith in Ethan Wanieri, or you just don't want a big squad. I heard yesterday a stat. Arsenal got the smallest squad in the league. That's worrying when you're going for all four competitions. Now, a lot of people have said to me, I've, wrote, I've written off all four competitions now. It's not going to happen. It ain't going to be the case. That's really sad to me. I want to go win that League Cup. I want to win the FA Cup. I want to compete in all four trophies. I want to get as far as we can into the Champions League and win that competition finally. I want to get across the line against Manchester City and beat them in the Premier League. But I'm being told that we can't go for all four competitions. So what does it mean? We've got to chuck some more away again? I want to go into every single competition knowing that we can win the game. Now, I'll say this. I think we can rotate. I don't know if the quality is there. We've got a backup goalkeeper now in Neto he'll play the cup games other than Carabao Cup because he's cup tied we've obviously got at the back Tommy Asu Zinchenko Kivior Calafiori they can be covered now with pretty stacked in defence in midfield Jorginho can come in likewise Thomas Partey can Marino when he's back fit in that attacking midfield option though I'm struggling it is Ethan Wanieri at the moment or maybe Kai Havertz drops into it we'll find that out at the weekend against Spurs Sterling, Saka, Martinelli, Trossard, we're fine wide now. But up top, if one of them's dropping, maybe it's Jesus, maybe it's Trossard that goes in the middle. People will say to me, we can cover every position, Dan. Absolutely. But guess what? We could last year, but they weren't good enough. Now, instead of Eddie, we've got Trossard coming on. Now, instead of Nelson, we've got Sterling coming on. But what about Erdegaard? Have we got Wanieri coming on? Is that much different to Smith Rowe? I would say it's a downgrade because it's a massive risk. We don't know much about it, Wanieri. This is where I'm at right now. I need to look at that squad and believe it's good enough. And I'm still having question marks over two positions. If we would have bought Eze, 
and Tony, I'd have been like, boom, we've covered every position. Now, yeah, we want Nico Williams and Isak, of course we do, but let's be realistic. We probably won't get any of both of those, right? So that's where I'm at with a transfer window. With Mikel Arteta, I think we, he's, he's proven that he can get us into a title race. The Cronkies has proven there's no pressure for you to win it. Sign your deal, doesn't matter for the next three. If you don't get it, you're still our guy. And I truly believe that that's the way they look at it. And that's the way a lot of the fan base look at it as well. A lot of people will say, rival fans, if he doesn't win Saint this season, he's got to go. Nah, he won't go. He's staying whatever. Unless we finish 7th or 8th, I honestly believe that he's going to stay at Arsenal for a very long time. And maybe, and maybe, that is what the majority of the fan base wants. Big up, people. Hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you next time.